Hello, everybody. Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. All right. There's the featured link, protestchildkilling.com. From there, you can get to rallyforpersonhood.com. You can get to all my campaigns, all my ministries, everything about me. As a matter of fact, I have to do a bio today. Oh, I have to remember that bio, bio, bio. Okay, bio today uh, for a gig that I'm doing in June. Let me put that here, bio and pick. All right. So, uh, today I want to talk about biases, hidden biases, and how, you know, I, I, I think that for most of us, and this is a sign of our pridefulness, a lack of humility, don't recognize the biases within us. And then we're the last ones to recognize, right? So I'm going to give you an example. All right. And I just read this again, and I understand where he's coming from. Uh, all right. I understand where he's coming from. Uh But, we'll, but I, I want to point out a couple of things, okay? So I wake up to this this morning, okay? All right? And I, I'm going to read a couple of uh, comments. I'm not going to mention any names, of course. But I wake up and this gentleman says to me, Father, where is your humility in responding to this other gentleman? Aren't priests supposed to guide the laity with compassion and empathy? He pointed out specifics that you could guide him to a better understanding of your position on Pope Francis by addressing them. Instead, you respond in a way that comes across as you being irritated and angry and very prideful. There is no charity given by you in your response to Vincent, and I don't agree with his and I don't agree with his perspective on Pope Francis. Your response to those who criticize Pope Francis comes across in the same manner as those media heads like Taylor Marshall in a way they criticize our Pope. There is no charity nor humility from either end. If you want Catholics who criticize Pope Francis to change their minds and be open to hear you, they should be responded to with love, charity, empathy, and compassion, not attacked in the same manner as the critics of Pope Francis attacked him. Okay, now. There's a lot of truth in what he says, right? That in terms of me responding to this other gentleman, I could have been far more charitable, far more charitable. Uh, far more empathetic. But it's interesting, he says that uh, he doesn't agree with his perspective on Pope Francis. Well, I don't see him then using a response to the original criticism of Pope Francis. What, right? In other words, somebody posted a criticism of Pope Francis, I responded, and now he's uh, attacking me on my response to the original attack, right? He does not, in charity, in empathy, in love, point out to this other guy who he disagrees with, okay? He comes on my page and criticizes me, right? And I really think that he has an issue with me or a pope, and obviously he's been following me because he says that, that and again, your response to those who criticize the Pope Francis comes across in the same manner as those media heads like Taylor Marshall in the way they criticize the Pope. Now, that's his perspective. Uh, I would say if that was true in all cases, and I'm not saying it's never true by any means, but if it was true in all cases, the many, many, many people that I have enlightened in terms of where they are in regards to the Pope or where they were in regards to the Pope would not have come over to seeing, all right, uh, where they need to be, 
or where they should be, what is proper. So again, this is a perfect example of snatch shop and time, all right? But anyway, he's criticizing me. And, and, and yet he's saying he really ag ag agrees with my position on the Pope. He disagrees with this other guy's position on the Pope. But I should have been more charitable. I should have been more understanding. I should have been more empathetic, all right? Okay. Now, let's, let's read... All right, let's read what he's talking about here. And a lot of people chimed in on this thread. I'm trying to find the, okay. So this is the this is the uh, comment that started this portion of the. All right now now. This is what I'm reading, and then I'm going to read you my response to him. All right. Okay. Sorry you lost me on this, Father. Sorry, sorry, you lost me on this, Father. The things this Marxist of a Pope has said is what's disgusting. So in the first line, the Pope is a Marxist and disgusting. He seems to be more about the social gospel, liberal liberation theology, a fancy term for Marxism. So now twice he's called the Pope Marxist. Then he is the actual gospel. Well, that is an absolute lie. Seems though. He said seems though. He spends more time on climate change than on the need for repentance. He's allowing his priest to bestow a blessing on same-sex couples alone is enough to disqualify him from Peter's seat. So he's lying now about what the Pope said in Fiducius Supplicans. And he's basically saying that he's no longer Pope. So he's a heretic, no longer Pope. Okay. His implying that there are many ways to God is appalling. He comes across as angry and bitter. He displayed his true self when an older Catholic woman, probably out of desperation, pulled him as he shook, pulled him as he shook hands with the crowd. His response was to hit her. Well, if you if you watch the videos. I don't think his, I don't think that was the greatest moment, all right, of the Pope. But, uh, you know, again, uh, I think that there was uh, th some problems on both sides. But anyway, this is what, this is uh, 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 an added to the Pope's disgusting, the Pope's a communist, the Marxist, a heretic, and uh, he's not even a legitimate Pope, right? All right, perhaps if she was with another woman in a relationship, he would have blessed them. Pope St. John Paul II was the real dear. Bergoglio is an abomination. All right, so that's, that's his opening comment. Okay. All right. Now, this was my response. I am not surprised I lost you on this because you have just made my case. Kind of shows how in the dark you are, which you validate by the time your diatribe ends. I heard it once said, knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darkness of others. Now, you know where I got that quote from? Knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darkness of others. I got that quote from this guy's page. On this guy's page, he has that as his banner quote. His banner quote. So he's basically talking about the darkness of Pope Francis. 
And I came across this quote after I said, kind of shows how in the dark you are, which you validate by the time your diatribe ends. So I was being prophetic there, validated by the quote on this guy's page. Now I went to his page. I went to his page to get a better understanding of him. Better understanding of him and who he is. And I do this all the time. When I, when I get people who come on the attack, I try to get a sense of who they are. So I go to their page, uh, et cetera. And that's what I did. So I came across this. So that's my entire response to him. That is the response that triggered. Oh, there's more. So he says, interesting retort, Father. I mentioned specifics which can be easily verified. You respond by calling me dark and my points a diatribe. Well, I am dark partly as we all are. We are all after all human after all, prone to sin and error. But Francis isn't simply making an error or mistake. He's trying to transform the church into something unrecognizable. Perhaps instead of calling me dark, you can address the argument. Address his diatribe. So what was his argument? He didn't lay out an argument. He attacked the Pope, calling the Pope names, lying about the Pope, right? And now he's calling me out for calling him dark, right? And I said, no, you can reflect on your own. Quote, why should I address your biased lies and your name calling? Marxist abomination lying about fiducius supercons. No, I am sorry. I stand on my post and my comment to you. Who do you think you are? Now, I'm saying this because this is the original post that I posted. Who do you think you are? You think you're holy? You think you're humble, intelligent? Who do you think you are? I know the poster child for this post, right? So I'm trying to get him to reflect on where he is, right? And then he answers, I am no one. So he's humbled. He's humbled. He's finally humbled. And then a whole bunch of other people attack him. All right. A whole bunch of other people attack him. All right. But this guy comes and attacks me. Right. He attacks me. Which, you know, look it. You know. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And, and, and actually, I explain it, all right, to this other gentleman who attacked me, all right? And I said, all right, I laid out the fact that he's just attacking the Pope. He's attacking the Pope. He's lying about the Pope, etc. all right? But then I, I, I make another comment. I want to say something else, which I've said over and over again. Facebook is a virtual reality. The people who come to my home here, my page, right? And I consider my Facebook page my home, right? Are expected to maintain a certain decorum. I rarely comment on other people's pages. And when I do, it is not to take issue with what they say. I scroll by. If I want to take issue with what people say, I scroll by. I rarely, if ever, comment on other people's pages other than a like or, you know, a wow or something like that. But commenting, I rarely comment on other people's pages unless it's a joke and I add to the joke. But but a common, you know, if if I see something that that upsets me or... Rubs me. I, I don't comment. I scroll by. Right? These people are coming into my house, my Facebook page. Now, it is on an open feed, a public feed, and my pages are public. All right? But, all right, it's my house. 
And I scroll by. I don't know you. I don't know him. Obviously, you know nothing about me. Have you watched any of my masses, any of my lives, prayed with me here on my page, on my virtual home? I doubt it. Sorry if you don't think I am a humble or a, or a poor priest based on one comment. It's the nature of this virtual reality. All right? So he's going to have a problem with that comment because I'm not loving. I'm not kind. I'm not, you know, empathetic, right? Uh, and and so, you know, this goes back to, you know, really what is the nature of charity? What does charity really mean, right? And 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 really the bottom line is what I'm trying to say is I know who I am. I know I can be more charitable. I know I can be more empathetic. I know I can be more loving, okay? And there's places for that, all right? In my reality, all right, I really get upset with anyone. As a matter of fact, on the beach the other day, a guy was screaming at me, screaming at me for no reason. He was drunk. He's screaming. I found out later on he was screaming about everybody, and I, I just didn't really... I wasn't mean to him. I wasn't upset. He actually called me a few pejorative words, uh, and and I didn't I didn't respond because that's reality. This is not reality. This is virtual reality. I don't know these people. I don't know who they are, right? And many people, right? I never heard this guy before. I never heard the other guy before. Many of my followers I know very, very well. Not that I've ever met them, but I know them very well. And I treat them much differently. And they'll, they'll, that's why they're, they're loyal to me. And they, they like me because I'm a, I'm a priest and, and in a virtual reality. And I treat them well. All right, here's the bottom line. Do we know ourselves? This gentleman who criticized me has his own biases, has his own issues. And I don't think he recognizes them. The guy who originally criticized the Pope has plenty of biases and he doesn't recognize them, right? Uh, I think I have a pretty good handle on who I am, but the fact still remains. These people criticize the Pope in the most horrible way. The guy who criticized me chose to criticize me, not the guy who criticized the Pope, even though he had issues with what the, he claims he had issues that he he agrees me, I guess, with the Pope. But but he didn't criticize the other guy. He didn't he didn't come to the defense of the Pope. I came to the defense of the Pope. And this is problematic. Who's gonna come to the defense of the Pope? Right? If somebody's denigrating the Pope, calling the Pope names, lying about the Pope, and I've said this from the very beginning, I am not going to abide by that. And I may not be nice in terms of pushing back. That's it. That's it. So this guy does not push back on the guy who's calling the Pope's names, lying about the Pope, denigrating the Pope. He pushes back on me because I'm not loving enough. I'm not caring enough. I'm not empathetic enough. Right? Right? So, uh, yeah, this is, this is, and then in terms of criticizing people, they can say anything they want about the Pope as soon as you say anything about them, you're not loving, you're not caring, right? They won't look at themselves and say, hey, I'm not loving, I'm not caring. I mean, you know, I'm justified in their minds. They are justified in criticizing the Pope, calling the Pope names, denigrating the Pope, lying about the Pope. They're justified. Every single one of them, Vigano and Marshall and Anthony Stein and Michael Matt, all of them, John Henry Weston, this guy Vincent, right? That's perfectly okay. That's acceptable. But if we push back against these people, we're not loving, we're not caring, we're not empathetic, we're not charitable, right? So there, there's, there's real issues here. There's real issues here, right? 
And the overwhelming majority of people on this, uh, this uh, thread get where I'm coming from. All right, they, they, they really do. They, they get where I'm coming from. They, they know who I am, right? They know who I am. So, uh, but the, the bottom line, what I'm trying to get here is it, we would do well to all reflect on, do we really know ourselves? Do we really see ourselves as other people see us? This guy who attacked me this morning, do I see myself in what he's saying? Yes, I already said. I can be more loving. I can be more empathetic, etc. Does he see himself the way he should see himself with his biases? I don't know. Vincent, does he? Absolutely not. Do most Pope critics see themselves in terms of being uncharitable, unloving? Un, you know, no, absolutely not. No, they, they, they seem justified. As I've always said, you know, criticizing the Pope means never having to say, I'm sorry. That is absolutely. And then when you uh, uh, criticize them, put a, I mean, it, it, they, again, they'll, they'll slander, denigrate, label. I mean, it's, it's lie. And you say anything negative to them, it's like you're the bad guy, right? It's interesting stuff. All right, something else uh, that I want to mention is this whole, again, Israeli-Palestine thing, because I've been really reflecting on that a lot. Again, do I have biases towards Islam? Absolutely. Do I have biases towards Muslims? I have biases towards Muslims that uh, are living the Islamic faith the way it's called to be lived. So yeah, I do have biases against them. Same way as I have biases towards people who denigrate and slander and lie about the Pope. I have issues. I have issues with them. Islam, in its 14-year history, has shown themselves not to be a, a religion of peace, but a religion of hate, a religion of war, a religion of oppression, suppression. And they want to exterminate Israel. No one, no one knows, unless you're an Israeli living in Israel, no one knows what it's like to wake up every day and wondering if this is the day your nation and you are going to be exterminated. How is what the, the people in Israel going through now and have been going through decades any different than the the slum neighborhoods, the pol the uh, uh, Jewish slums in in Warsaw or the other cities in Poland before they were hauled off to the gas chambers. Those people woke up every single day under Nazi Germany, wondering if that was the day they're going to be loaded into boxcars and led to slaughter. Right now, they're waking up every day wondering if all the nations, all the Arab nations, are going to uh, unite and and attack them. It, it's the same. It's, we we can't understand this. We can't understand this. And 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 I I just don't understand people being anti-Semitic. And then again, it's the same thing, right? You call them anti-Semitic, they'll call you Zionist. You're Zionist. Merely because I don't believe that Israel should have to live day in and day out worried about being exterminated, annihilated. I'm a Zionist. I'm a Zionist. That I believe that that area and larger area than what they occupy now is their homeland. 
We just heard from about Paul this morning was in Damascus. Right? Damascus. Right? Which was part of, of, of Israel back in those days. Right? It's not part of Israel now. So, you know, again, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is important to reflect. That man who criticized me this morning, I'm going to continue to criticize. I criticize. I'm sorry. Maybe that's a Freudian slip. Uh, I am. I am. I am going to continue to to reflect on on where I need to improve, being softer, more loving. Uh, but I am hardwired for injustice against injustice, and I am hardwired to speaking the truth. And I am not a warm, fuzzy, feely guy. I can be. I can be to people truly in need, but I'm not. I'm in militant mode, church militant mode. You're attacking the church. You're attacking the Pope. You're attacking the magisterium. All right, I'm going to respond in kind, right? And I do it intellectually, not emotionally. It's intellectually, but I can be intellectually tough. I can throw it right back into your face. But I need to work on this. It's a constant discernment of where that line is. All right, but I would dare say those who want to criticize me, uh, I just ask you, are you self-reflecting? Are you looking inside of yourself, your own biases, your own prejudices, your own distorted view of reality for whatever reason it is? And I will tell you, all of the chronic Pope critics have a distorted view of reality, a seriously distorted view of reality. And there's an awful lot of people on social media that have a distorted view of reality because they see social media as reality when it's not. It's a virtual reality, right? A virtual reality. Right, And again, the whole idea of me going to other people's pages to get a sense of who they are. I would say that that guy this morning right, did not ever go to my page and see, and again, I, I confronted him on that, my masses, my live streams where we pray. And we haven't prayed yet. Mea copa, mea copa, mea maxima copa. We have to pray. All right, and let's get to that right now, okay? Because I don't want to... This, this horse is dead, man. I beat this horse to death, didn't I? All right, very good. Um, did you see the Russell Brand video brought tears to my eyes? I had a couple of really chilling moments these last few days. That Russell Brand video where he's leading the rosary and he admits he doesn't even know all the prayers. The humility, the docility, I mean, just, it's beautiful. And it's what the Holy Spirit's been doing for 2,000 years, right? Uh, and and again, the Russell Brands, uh, uh, the uh, Shia LaBeouf, uh, all of these high-profile conversions. Uh, uh, the psychologist's wife, right? Boy, the Catholic Church, the Pope must be horrible. The Pope must absolutely be horrible, right? For these high-profile people to want to embrace the church, right? And not one of them has said, I'm embracing the church in spite of the Pope. Not one of them has said that, right? Somebody else is pointing out that many of the defenders of the Popes are convert converts. Somebody had just put my friend Andrew Lacutus just posted a meme today about Trent Horn and Matt. I guess it was Matt Fratt. I don't know. He didn't name Matt. Uh, but uh, Aikens, Horn, who else? All converts, defenders of the Pope, right? But many of the critics of the Pope are also converts. Also converts, right? Marshall. A Taylor Marshall, all right, is is a convert, right? Um, so uh, 
Oh, Michael Lofton was mentioned, right? So uh, it's interesting. The Holy Spirit's at work in his church. There's no doubt that is where I place my hope in the Holy Spirit. And I'm sorry, I'm going to stand up against those who don't mildly disagree with the Pope, but criticize the Pope, attack the Pope, slander the Pope, lie, lie about the Pope. I'm going to push back. I'm going to push back. I'm going to push back as hard as they push up against the Pope. All right, that's it. Father Stephen Arado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Um, in future lives, I'm going to talk about this revelation that I was uh, exposed to, this observation that I was exposed to about how the Shroud of Turin I was the shroud, the, the crucified man that was wrapped in the shroud, that the image left by the man was left when he was upright. Think about that. So if the shroud of Turin is the shroud of the crucified Christ, the buried Christ, the wounds, there's two apps, there's two, two uh, distinct observations about the many, 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 but the two large overarching distinctions about the shroud is that there's wounds of a crucified man. Those wounds scientifically have been shown to be of a man lying down. But the image, all right, seems to be of a man standing up. They don't contradict each other, all right? The wounds were when they wrapped Jesus in the shroud and the image was left by Jesus as he rose from the dead. That's the only time he was standing up. So I'm reading this book about it now. I'll talk more about it later. Let's uh, let's pray now. Let's do all of our prayers right now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We always start off by invoking St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Now let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Uh, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs. Mourning, weep in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired with this confidence. We fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother, to you we come. Before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. All right, so that's the consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We've got a couple of minutes before the Angelus. We're going to finish with the Angelus. But St. Joseph, my patron saint, born on the Feast of St. Joseph, March 19th. Uh, pray for us. I did an interview yesterday. With Joe and Joe from New Jersey, my two friends, Joe and Joe from New Jersey. And of course, I'm Stephen Joseph. Great interview. And I attribute that to uh, the intercessory graces of St. Joseph, the patron saint of all three guys on that interview. Right. And it seems it seems every single time that uh, I've been felt, I feel that I'm in the presence of St. Joseph, uh, the Holy Spirit just fills me up. And of course, the Holy Spirit filled St. Joseph. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope 
of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the Church. And remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops and all priests, especially in our hour of need. Our Lady of Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world and the end to abortion. Amen. Our Lady of America dot com, Our Lady of America dot com. For the devotees of Our Lady of America, go to Our Lady of America dot com. It's the original website created by Sister Mildred the Seer, and this is an approved USCCB private devotion. A USCCB approved private devotion. Let's pray for all those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations cancer, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, clinical depression, suicidal ideation, grieving of any kind, right? Any type of spiritual or physical trial and tribulation. Very dear friend of mine, my social media gal is very, very sick, has been very sick all week with malaria. Of course, another dear friend has cancer. Um, I have friend PTSD. I, it's, it's, it's just... We all need prayers every single day, and so that's why we pray with each other, for each other, and especially for those who have physical and spiritual trials and tribulations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It's noontime, the angelus, the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, holy, well, I'm sorry. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray, pour forth. We beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and his cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection. For the same Christ our Lord, amen. May the divine assistance remain with us forever. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Our daily offering, we offer up, Lord, to you our entire day, our joys, our sorrows, our trials, our tribulations, our suffering, our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time. We ask you to shed your mercy upon our personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, ministerial uh, 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 vocational intentions, for the intentions of all those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for, the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each day, right? And so that's our daily offering every day. We, we should be starting off. I did Mass this morning, right? Check out my Mass, my homily, Eucharistic Adoration this morning. Father Imbrato Live, sorry we didn't pray till the very end, uh, but at least we pray every single day. We pray right? I mean, to me, prayer is more important than the commentary, than the, the scriptural reflection, the spiritual direction, all right? It's prayer, which is most, most important. That's why we pray every single day. I was just watching, again, one of these constant chronic critics of the Pope today, 18-minute video, not, not even a thought to pray. Not even a thought. I've never seen this guy pray, to be quite honest with you. He, and he, he's, he's about returning to tradition. Returning to tradition. Well, when I was a kid, when I was where you want to go back to, I didn't pass a church without going in and visiting a church. Blessed myself past every... We were praying all the time. We prayed all the time. Morning, noon, night, the Angelus. Right? Prayed the Angelus. 
You want to return to tradition? Pray. Stop criticizing the Pope and pray. Pray for the Pope. Pray for yourself. Pray for the church, right? All right, share this video, one share per group, one share per page, and invite your family and friends to join us each and every single day. Featured link right there, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.